Alright people, welcome to our fourth session in our online learning module for anatomy. Today we're going to be looking at agonist and antagonist muscles. Now so far we've looked at the skeletal system, the muscular system and joint movements. Hopefully today we'll draw this all together. What I hope from you for at the end of this session is to be able to uh, identify what an agonist and antagonist muscle is, be able to draw links from last lesson on joint movements and be able to identify which are the muscles that are involved in each of those movements and also be able to start to draw links between all the systems that we've talked about so far. So let's make a start. You'll remember from lesson two we were talking about the two main functions of muscles. We said that a muscle can relax or a muscle can contract. This is all to do with agonist and antagonist pairings. Let's talk about agonist muscles first. For this session today we're going to be looking at the flexion and extension of the elbow. Alright, agonist muscles. These are commonly referred as prime movers, reason being that they are the main uh, muscle involved in drawing two bones closer to one another. In this case we're going to be using our elbow flexion, our bicep is going to be our agonist muscle, that's going to shorten and it's going to contract to allow this action to occur. The easiest way to remember agonist muscles is especially if we have weights and we're trying to do a bicep curl, it will put us under some form of agony. So drawing these two bones together will put us under some form of agony and we can refer back to that as an agonist muscle. Shortening and contracting. Alright, so remembering that for any muscle action we need to have an agonist muscle and an antagonist muscle. In the case of our uh, elbow flexion here, and we said that our bicep was the uh, agonist muscle drawing these two bones together by shortening and contracting. Our antagonist muscle works in direct opposite to that, and in this case will be our tricep muscle. Our antagonist muscle, it lengthens and it relaxes during this action, and the nice easy way to remember antagonist is anti-agony, whereas agonist was agony, our antagonist is anti-agony. You won't find any pain in doing this action uh, for your tricep. You'll probably feel most of it in your bicep. So easy way to remember antagonist, anti-agony. For those of you that understood the muscular system uh, when we looked at it in lesson two, you'll remember that I taught you teaching them in pairs. Now most commonly, those are our agonist-antagonist pairings. If we remember down to our lower legs, you'll remember the tibialis anterior, tibia on the front, and we have our gastrocnemius. Those are an agonist-antagonist pairing. You've already learnt about the arms and how biceps and triceps are agonist and antagonist pairings. And within class, and hopefully within the worksheet, you'll be able to start to think of some more links uh, between agonist and antagonist pairings. Alright people, so hopefully this lesson has helped you. Agonist antagonist pairings are very simple to understand if you remember the key points. Agonist muscles are those that shorten and contract and bring the two bones closer to one another. On the other side, we have our antagonist muscle. That is anything that lengthens and relaxes during the muscle action. Remember, agonist puts us under agony. Antagonist is anti-agony. Remember, we need to have both present uh, agonist antagonist for any muscle action to occur and remember they always work in direct opposites so in our uh, elbow flexion and extension case when we go from flexion to extension our pairs swap over so our agonist becomes our antagonist and our antagonist becomes our agonist please if you have any questions ask in class or on this site here but for now, please make a start on the worksheet below this video and we'll talk more in class.